Hello, my name is Martin Williams and I'm a professor of psychology at the University of Leeds. And one of the things that I do at the University of Leeds is research into children and try and understand how children move and interact with the world. And one of the really important questions within my research is how children perceive the world. So what I'd like to do is consider the issue of perception and address the question of what is perception? Well, if I was set a question in an exam, what is perception? The first thing I'd try and do is give a nice clear definition of perception. And I would turn to a trusty dictionary. Dictionaries are always useful places to get nice clear definitions. And I'd look up the word perception and find out what definition the dictionary provided. It might not be a perfect definition, but at least it's a starting place. So let's start off with a definition of perception. So here's one potentially useful definition. Perception is the process by which an organism detects and interprets information from the external world by means of the sensory receptors. So key within that definition is the idea of information. Perception is the process by which we obtain information about the world, and particularly about our relationship with the world. Also within that definition is the idea that we have receptors, so that humans possess receptors that allow us to detect and interpret information. So I'd like us just to think about some of those different receptors and the different systems which are available to allow us to detect and interpret information. So let's just think about some of the perceptual systems. So when we're thinking about perceptual systems, we need to start thinking about the idea of modality. Modality defines a class of stimulus determined by the type of stimulus energy which is transmitted and the specialized sense receptors that the human or organism possesses that allows them to detect and interpret that stimulus energy. And when we think about the receptors, the central pathways, and the target areas in the brain, then we start defining a perceptual system. So humans possess a number of perceptual systems a number of systems which consist of receptors that allow us to detect and interpret information, then a number of pathways which allow that information to be transmitted through the body, and then a number of target areas in the brain which help us again detect and interpret the information. So there are a number of different modalities, and those different modalities have different sense receptors. And those different sense receptors are required in order to allow us to get as much information as we can about the world and about our relationship within the world. So one way we can think about trying to uh, just isolate the different modalities is thinking about the different types of information that we could use to tell us about the world. So what are the different types of information that humans and other organisms might use? Well, let's think specifically about some of the information that humans use. We can classify this into four basic types. We can talk about chemical energy, we can talk about thermal energy, we can talk about mechanical energy, and we can talk about electromagnetic energy. So let's start off by thinking about chemical energy. How can chemicals provide me with information about the world? Well, I've got a special chemical dispenser here, which I got from a, a well-known supermarket. Uh, so if I just give this uh, chemical dispenser a shake and then just press the button here, a bunch of chemicals come out into the air. And those chemicals will start entering my nose. And there are special sense receptors inside my nose that will tell me about the chemicals in the air. And of course, this is the process of smell. So chemicals, airborne chemicals, stimulate receptors inside my nose, and they provide me with information about the world, about chemicals within the world. And of course, this is incredibly important when we're looking for food substances. So what other chemical information is there? Well, if I go to that same supermarket and buy a little piece of food like this, I might want to take a little nibble. And as I nibble and I eat this food, so chemicals are released in my mouth. And on my tongue, there are sense receptors. So the receptors which are sensitive to some of the chemicals within that food substance, and they provide me with information about what I've just put in my mouth. So again, incredibly important information that humans need. There are other ways 
that we can obtain information from chemicals. So if I take my chemical dispenser again and I give it a spray on my sort of skin, I find that slightly irritating. And the reason I'm finding it slightly irritating is those chemicals have actually stimulated some receptors in my skin. And what that's going to make me do is just give myself a little bit of an itch. So chemical energy can stimulate some very specific receptors. Receptors within my nose, receptors on my tongue, and receptors in my skin. And each of those different receptors send information back to my brain which tell me about the world. So chemical energy provides me with some useful information about the world. So what other forms of energy can we think about? Well, we can think about thermal energy. So if I take a box of matches like this and I light one of these matches and I hold that match under my hand, my hand starts to feel actually a little bit uncomfortable. And the reason my hand's feeling uncomfortable is because there are receptors within my skin which are sensitive to thermal energy. Of course, it's really important to be sensitive to thermal energy because it tells me to avoid things which are too hot and allows me to ensure that my body is in a good environment, an environment which is not too hot, an environment which is not too cold. So I have special receptors in my skin that tell me about the heat within the environment. So there's chemical energy, there's thermal energy, and then there's mechanical energy. So, what information can mechanical energy give us? Well, if I clap my hands like that, what happens is I displace some air. And that air, that displacement of air, causes vibrations throughout this room. And my ear can detect those changes, those vibrations. And the way that it detects those vibrations is there are small hairs within my ear. So I've got a model of an ear here. So if I just bring this up, is there a real ear? This is a model ear. If I bring up the model ear, there's actually some hairs within the ear which actually vibrate because if the air vibrates. And those small vibrations cause cells to fire to generate an electrical stimulus. And that electrical stimulus is then conducted along some nerve pathways into my brain. So we can have information about the world via mechanical energy. So sound causes displacement of air, and the ear can detect mechanically those changes in air pressure, and that's how we can hear. So mechanical energy provides me with important information about the world. And there's another way that the ear can provide information. So again, if I get the sort of model of the ear up like this. So within the ear, there's a system called the vestibular system. And the vestibular system consists of some canals. And inside those canals, there's fluid. And what happens if I start moving my body around is that the liquid inside the canals starts to move around. And again, there are mechanical detectors within those canals that detect the fact that my head is moving around. And so that provides really useful information about my relationship with the world. So again, mechanical energy providing me with really important information about how I'm moving within the world. And the final really important form of information that we can use comes from electromagnetic energy. And what we're going to do in the next podcast is actually just talk about the importance of electromagnetic energy. And of course, this electromagnetic energy, which is so important to humans, is visible light. So the sun pours out visible light on the Earth, and we can use that light to tell us about the world. And the reason we can use that information is because the light bangs into surfaces, and some of the light is reflected backwards. And we can detect the light that is detected back to tell us about objects within the world. And we'll see that that's incredibly important information to humans. So they're just some of the different perceptual systems that allow us to detect and interpret the different forms of information that tell us about the world and our relationship within the world. But what I want to do now is just ask another question. So that's what perception is. But why? Why do we perceive? Why is perception so important to humans? Well, somebody once said that nothing in biology makes sense 
except in the light of evolution. And that's what I want to suggest is the importance of perception. What perception does is it provides us with information about the world and we can use that information about the world in order to be fit in our Darwinian evolutionary sense. So if we can get good information about the world out there, we can avoid predators, we can eat food, we can find mates and we can become an evolutionary success story. So the reason that perception is so important is because it's central to the evolution of humans. So thank you for listening, and if you'd like to learn more about perception, then listen to the next podcast. Thank you.